Taking the light to the gathering darkness, this is Wings of the Eagle Radio. Welcome to the End Time Revolution. Broadcasting worldwide on a mission to unite born-again servants to find the army of Elijah's preparing to face Antichrist to witness before all, come what may. This is Wings of the Eagle Radio. Yes, my friends, welcome back. This is Wings of the Eagle Radio. I am Pastor Christopher Manti, your host as always, and we are going uh, live around the world, uh, as always, here on the podcast, but as well as on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, uh, among many different pages and platforms. And I want to welcome you. If you've never heard us before, uh, I encourage you to... um, First of all, repent of your sin at the cross of Jesus Christ because he will save you. He will forgive everything you've ever done that is sinful. And he will resurrect you on the last day. That is a promise and a guarantee by Jesus himself. And that's you can't get that anywhere else, friend. No other religion, no other belief system uh, can make the promises that God can. The true God, the real God. Uh, revealed as Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. Yeah, he is the Messiah of Israel and of all who believe. So we want to keep that in mind always that that is what we're doing this for, and that's what this is all about. All right, so again, welcome, Wings of the Eagle Radio. Uh, Christopher Manti, we're doing a live simulcast uh, on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. And please let me know that you're out there, no matter what format you're listening to, uh, if you're live or even if this is recorded and you're seeing it later right now, it's about 11.30 a.m. on the east coast of the United States. And um, I will try my best to address your question, comment, or concerns. Um, I do hope we're going out. Uh, I believe we're good to go. Um, so again, uh, please just uh, let me know you're there. And it's important. Uh, it's important today because this is... I always pray about what the what the Lord would have me say, and it was important that um, today we're staying in our lane, so to speak. We know that um, the Holy Spirit will work many things in you and uh, reveal things to us as we study his word, as we walk as disciples, hopefully as disciple makers, Uh, and that always is job one. I don't care what part of history we're in. I don't care um, which church we call home. It doesn't matter uh, what hour of the drama we are at, whether these are the uh, very last hours of the age, or we've got a thousand years left until Jesus, um, the point is we should be making disciples and being disciples and being discipled, right? The Lord is good and always faithful. Um, But I think it's pretty clear that we are not too far from the end of the age, and that um, things are appearing in the earth, um, that... Um, were prophesied, right? That the Lord, through his spirit, through his prophets in the Bible, uh, tell us that these things are coming. And some things have happened, but some have not. And that's what I really wanted to get through to you today. Um, you know, just talking to friends and, and trying to get the pulse of believers around the world. Um, Christians really... I'm talking about born-again believers, you know, love the Word of God, um, uh, fellowship. Hopefully you're in fellowship. It says the, day, the closer the day of the Lord gets, the more important it is to fellowship with your fellow believers. So do that, please. Uh, if you're not in local fellowship, get in a Bible-believing church, Bible-believing, uh, or we have an online church called End Time Church. Just go to wearetheendtimechurch.com to find out how to do that. We're... Every Monday night, we get together throughout the world, literally, and um, 
praise God together and study, study the word of God and uh, sing praises to him and discuss it in a live video format. So it's really awesome. All right. Um, but one thing that keeps coming up, I mean, like all the time, um, regardless of where folks are in, in, uh, you know, in their study of God's word or prophecy or any of these things, always, 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 it seems, again, in the Western church, because that's where I'm at in America um, and in Europe, throw Australia in there, um, everyone wants to talk about the rapture. Still. Right? Um, to me, and to maybe you, it's old hat that we've, this should not be an issue um, that we're still discussing, but it is. Um, I, I think I get it. I think I understand. And again, welcome to everyone who's on our various uh, channels and uh, means of tuning in. Uh, this is Pastor Manti uh, here with Wings of the Eagle, uh, also a contributor to Armageddon News and End Time Church and a whole bunch of stuff, but an Iron Faith Fellowship uh, here locally for me. So welcome, Pastor Randy. I'm sure you're out there. Um, so the rapture uh, keeps coming up as, uh, as something that just won't go away. Okay? Um, we, hello, by the way. Welcome. Shalom to you, friends. I'm trying to get uh, reaction as I can from England. Praise God. Thank you. India. Praise God. Thank you, my friends. Good morning. Uh, Iowa. See, now Iowa counts just as much as India. That's that's awesome, all right? So please, again, just tell us where you're from and uh, we, that we can have this, that we can have fellowship, that we can use technology. Technology is not the realm of the devil, okay? Uh, Satan does not control the Internet. Um, God is in control of everything at all times, including this, and we want to use it for his glory. Amen? So don't be afraid um, to uh, use these things for the kingdom, and that's the point no matter what we're doing, for the kingdom of God first. Kingdom of God first. First, first. Not politics, not uh, getting rich, not um, prospering in some God, um, you know, godless way, some, some worldly way. Um, and certainly not to hate or to, or to um, get angry uh, or get divisive. The church has to unite. Okay, amen. Here we go. So I thought this was the most pertinent situation. Um... That is on your mind, and that's what, as a pastor, we always want to. Where's the flock, so to speak? Where are the the people who you're ministering to, um, uh, who want a word from God about these things? The rapture keeps coming up. All right. Uh, and again, welcome, folks. To Malta, praise God. This is awesome. Um, that's a country, by the way. Uh, wherever you are from, please again feel free to chime in. I can't promise I'll see it right now live on the air. Um, Galveston Island. Hey, that's Texas. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I can't promise that I'll address it live, but I will do my best all right, to get to it. All right. The point is this, uh, in terms of the rapture. Everyone wants, look, the blessed hope is the return of Christ. We know that. That's a fact. Nobody's disputing that. Um, no one would dispute, although you, although folks do, uh, nobody who really knows the word of God at all can dispute the fact that there will be a gathering of Christians of the saints of God's people together where we our bodies will be changed instantly and we are taken with the Jesus returning in the clouds to be with him that's indisputable the only um that's called we call that the rapture we call it the gathering to Christ is what i prefer um but whatever that you call it it's real and it's going to happen the the division is coming in where the timing of that where does that occur? Is this a separate event from the return of Christ when he comes to rule on the earth for a thousand years? And even that, that's a big thing. I could do a whole sermon on amillennialism. In other words, there is no literal millennium. When Jesus comes, that's the end of the story. There is no millennium. This is the millennium. No. Okay. Sorry. Um, but we're not talking about that. Uh, so the idea has developed over the years, since the you know, past 2,000 years of history, church history, that we should be expecting Jesus to come at any moment. That he could come tomorrow. He could come today. He can come a week from now. He can come 10 years from now. Right? That's what's wrong. That's what's incorrect. That's what's not Bible-based. That's our fleshly desire to be rescued, to be um, um, taken away from the world or taken away from trouble. But there's so many scriptures that tell us to 
endure through trouble, that Jesus himself said, you will have tribulation. And it's not just talking about the great tribulation. It's any, at any point in history, at any time in life, you will have it. He's, he's saying, look, just because um, you're a follower of mine, in fact, he says a thousand different ways, expect trouble. Expect persecution, expect tribulation, expect to be opposed, uh, to be hated. And how do we return that hatred? With the love of God, with the offer of salvation. Yes, today is the day of salvation, no doubt. You can, you can die today, friends. You can die today. The, your neighbor who's unsaved and the lost and the pagans and whoever else, they could die today without Christ, and that is not good. Right? We know that? Not good. That's why we have to witness. That's why we have to provide the gospel. That's why we have to give a defense of the faith. What is the faith that is in you? That we're going to be resurrected. That Jesus died uh, sinless on the cross and for you and me and everyone else, and he rose from the dead three days later. Whoever repents of his sin and comes to that cross is saved. And he will be resurrected on the last day. That's Jesus, John 6. So that's, that's our faith. The whole counsel of God, the whole gospel is, yes, born of a virgin, died on the cross, sinless, uh, rose from the dead three days later, and he's returning again to establish his millennial kingdom. And those of us who are alive at that time, we don't know who that will be, but wh- whichever of us are still alive will be instantly changed, that's what we call the rapture, and to join the saints who have already died that return with Christ. All right? Um, the other thing, and a lot of you perhaps know this, if you follow Wings of the Eagle at all, if you follow Armageddon News, you know that we teach a post-tribulation gathering of the saints. In other words, after the Great Tribulation is over, that's when Jesus comes and the rapture occurs. Um, some of us will be even divided in that. They're like, well, it's pre-wrath versus, you know, I'm not going to get into all that. But the point is, it's, it's after the Tribulation. Because Jesus said that, after the Tribulation. Um, but, by the same token... So Jesus cannot come tomorrow. Did you know that? He can't come the next day. He can't come for a minimum of seven years. Why do I say that? Because the events, if the gathering to Christ and the return of Christ is at the end of this Daniel 70th week, the last seven years of the age, after the tribulation, after the birth pains, this whole period that Jesus has set up, the Lord has had this plan from the beginning. Um, If he doesn't come till the end, that means the beginning has to start to even think about the end of it, right? So we haven't started the 70th week of Daniel. That seven-year period has not started. Therefore, he can't come for seven years plus. Plus. Um, So know that and live that way and live in the urgency of that, that um, there is a plan in place and that salvation is available to the lost and to you to be conformed to his image and to, to be holy and all these things. See, now, for example, I'm just uh, taking a look at one of the YouTube broadcasts. I already have two down votes, two, two uh, thumbs down, because I said what? Jesus can't come today, and neither can the Antichrist. That's, that's another key. A lot of us are looking at, um, you know, we see prophecy, even though, yes, okay, we see it, that we're, we can't be raptured t- tomorrow. Jesus can't come right away. We understand that part. But then a lot of us are looking for the Antichrist to show up any day. He can't show up any day either. There's a, a plan for that. There's a process for that. That's why we have so many prophetic texts in the prophets of the Old Testament, in the book of Revelation, in the Gospels themselves, in the letters of Paul and Peter and Jude, etc. There's a litany, there's a thing, uh, a checklist, basically, that has to occur. Antichrist cannot just show up either. He comes, he's not in a vacuum. It's not just boom, here's, here's the Antichrist. There's an uh, order of events that lead to him as well. So we got to resist the temptation as the church to say, oh, I'm looking for the Antichrist. It's got to be, even if we agree, you know, I personally believe in End Time Church and Wings of the Eagle and Armageddon News, etc. Um, we do teach that Islam uh, is the method and the religion, the belief system that Satan has set up for the end times. So all these negative um, parts of God's plan that we read about, about the persecution of the Jews and the hatred of the Jews and the persecution of the church and the death by beheading and the the location of where the beast is in these nations and all these things line up perfectly with Islam and the caliphate, okay? Their their, um, um, desire for a one, um, a combined kingdom of nations that whoever is a Muslim now 
has to answer to this um, kingdom and this leader that is set up called the Caliph. So, but we're not there, obviously, right? We look at the Muslim world and especially focus in, and even though when I say Muslim world, you know, the most, the biggest Muslim country is actually Indonesia. And then Pakistan, Bangladesh, and India. Those are the biggest Muslim countries. We don't usually associate them, but we should. Um, as far as individual souls, those are the biggest areas of need. Um, but the Middle East is what we should be focused on because we are told in many different places, sorry to clear a message there, um, that there's uh, locations that when we're told in Revelation 13 to look back at the book of Daniel, because we know that none of this is going to happen until there's a beast system, what the Bible calls it. It's a kingdom. It's, it's one super nation. Ten kings come together and say, let's do this. Let's combine ourselves. It's not Europe. We are told to look in the Middle East. We are told there's a lion, a bear, and a leopard. And when those nations, and those are nations, when they get together as one, that's when the Antichrist can come. Real simple. Uh, we've taught this a thousand different times, a thousand different ways. Please go to uh, wingsoftheeagle.com and, and take our courses on these things. We lay it out very, very specifically and plainly from the scriptures. Basically, okay, the short, the Cliff Notes version, who are the lion, the bear, and the leopard? The lion are this old country where Babylon used to be. Ancient Babylon was Iraq and Syria. Where's the bear? Bear is the land of Persia. Where's Persia? Iran. Uh, what's the leopard? The leopard is Yavon, okay? This is the area of Turkey. So if you see, and we know where Turkey, Iran, Iran, uh, Iran, Iraq, and Syria are, correct? Look at the map. Look at those countries. Are they united today? No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. As a matter of fact, we have the last two days, major um, um, riots almost, protests and, and violence, and people are dying in Iraq because they're revolting against the Iranian influence there. So the Iran and Iraq are not one, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, that region is not ready to get together. Turkey and Syria are not in any way united. Okay, for example, or Turkey and Iraq. It's just not anything close to that right now. So the Antichrist cannot come until they're together. That's the Bible. So don't even think about looking for them. Okay? It's not, there's no point uh, in trying to pinpoint it on somebody. Um, we do know something about, obviously because we're shown the geography, that there is a geography, that there are nations to look at, that he will come from among these places. And so when he's called the Assyrian, or he's called the king of the north, or he's called you know, things that identify geography... Uh, then we should know that, yes, he has to be from either Iraq, Syria, or Turkey. Those would fit the description of where the, what the prophets describe um, as the great you know, Gog of Magog, the king of the north, the Assyrian, uh, the great enemy of Israel, is from the surrounding nations, quote-unquote. That's Many of the prophets say surrounding nations. So it has to be physically very near um, to Israel. And these are the great empires of the past, include, what, Egypt and Assyria and uh Persia, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so when these all get together, and it, again, it's there's a reason why uh, God points out lion, bear, leopard, and does not say Rome, and does not say the far western nations, and does not say anything about that. So even if you understand nothing else, if you take nothing else away, only look for the Antichrist when Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey are combined under one government. It's only then and there will be other countries too, but those they're, they're at such um, odds and such warfare is happening, and it's just beginning. We're going to have a lot more serious war here pretty soon, and Iran's going to start it. Um, again, nothing to do with America. Nothing to do with Israel. It's not Israeli. Okay, They talk all about that stuff. They say it to whip up their people, to whip up the, the, the fervent um, uh, Islamic doctrines that say, you know, oh, Israel's the great enemy, so we're going to lead it, we in Iran. They're not going to attack Israel. There is no scripture that says that. It's only after there's united one country, ten kings as one, unite. Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Syria, and others. That's when Persia, the Iranians, are involved in attacking Israel, but that's not till 
only three and a half years left of the age. Again, we're not there yet. So the, there are steps to this whole thing. Don't jump the gun, is my point, Christian. Don't jump the gun. Um, to the, just like Jesus can't come within the next seven years, the Antichrist cannot come yet. Now, how much longer until, you know, what conditions have to be met for him to arise? Not a whole lot. Um, not a lot. But it's still not tomorrow. Okay? This, these these um, battles and machinations, the things that are going to happen in these nations, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey, are going to be severe. Um, and they're going to take a little while. I don't know how long these things will go, but you're going to, just reading the details in the book of Daniel, for example, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, within 10 years, I'd say that's pretty pretty probable. Um, how about within the next five years? I could be convinced of that. Um you know, by tw- what year is it now? 2020 next year. Will it begin? Will all these things begin to occur by next year? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Uh, but again, there has to be some lead time. So the, the Antichrist to me is, I don't know, five years away. But that's just a guess. I don't know. You can't, there's no scripture that says that. But the point is, there has to be things that must occur. So he can't arrive tomorrow either. Don't be looking, please don't give me one of the key keys to his emergence, the Antichrist, is the fact that he is not in power today. He is not known today. Before he comes up and seizes that power, he's not known. So don't give me Barack Obama. Uh, don't give me any, don't give me Bashar al-Assad. Well, I've heard both those names saying this is the Antichrist. They are not. It has to be someone I believe you've never heard of. He will be unknown until that time. He certainly doesn't have uh, any country under his control yet. Um, it says he comes up after the ten kings unite, and then he overthrows three of them. So, to me, they're not going to put someone with power already. He just he comes up sneakily, okay? He sneaks up on them um, and leads them. He'll be the caliph. But again, that's after some process of time and process of events. Um, so, okay. All right? That's pretty much it. Do we have any questions that you wanted to... Um, put forward here, and I, I always hesitate to go to look at the Armageddon news feed because there are some crazy people out there, no, no doubt. Um, but also non-crazy people, and I love you all. Um, let's see here. Greetings from Norway. Thank you. Uh, let's try this. Many say that God can be so good. Why is there so much evil in the world? Because He wants us to realize what we are doing to ourselves. That's possible. Um, put Jesus first so I don't know your real name says the mark of the beast isn't a badge it is the name of the AC or the number of his name okay as the Bible okay Islam isn't the end time religion either why Bible says it's the worship of the Antichrist right well if the, if the Antichrist is the head of Islam then it all fits fine uh, Turkey war with Iran yes that is coming um, and again, a follow-up. I don't believe uh, there is a real Mahdi, which is the final caliph, because Islam is a false, made-up book. Well, yes, of course it is, but Satan made it up. And God, it, through what we see with ISIS, through what we see with, with jihad throughout the world, through what we see with the persecution of Christians and their hatred of Jews, it's baked into Islam that they must hate and kill the Jews. There is no other religion in the history of the world that says that. God is going to allow their and times to play out. Are you prepared for that, sir? Because they're going to look to all the world, it's going to look like they've won. And that Islam is true because God has given them victory. That's what they're going to claim. Um, okay, anything else? Um... Uh, have you explained? This is my first stream with you. Well, bless you, Marinor. Marinor, 
I don't, Marina, I, is that a girl? I'm not sure. Sorry, ma'am or sir. Uh, have you explained why you don't believe in imminence? Yes, because it's not true. Uh, it's not in the Bible. Um, the way, it is full of signs. It is full of signs that precede his coming. What is the sign of your coming? Boom, 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 boom. If there was no sign, he would say, there are no signs. I can come for you at any time. The end. But that's not, that's not what it says. Um... Oh, 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 that's right. Prince Harry. First it was uh, the Antichrist. Pin the tail on the Antichrist. First it was Prince Charles. You guys probably aren't old enough to remember that. First it's Prince Charles is the Antichrist. But now it's Prince Harry. who's the, No, they're not. Guaranteed, 100%, bet you money, not the Antichrist. Um, okay. Very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to scroll around and see if they're... Uh, hey, Jason. Uh... Jason, every eye will see him. Though that's right. And that's the thing. That, to say that there's a coming of Christ that no one will see, that is not in the Bible at all. In fact, it's opposed to the scriptures. When it says every eye will see him, that means every eye will see him. When the, the rapture is called the resurrection also. That's the last day. We are raised up. We are changed, it says. First, uh, First Corinthians 15 is is explicit in the fact that the last trump, the last trumpet, the resurrection and the rapture are the same event. Uh, so there's there's no wiggle room in there. Okay. All right. Let me try to go to my my pals at Wings of the Eagle um, Network, because we do want to always honor that. Being that that's what the Lord has called us into primarily. Well, if you haven't liked our page, please do so. Um, and let's see. All right. Any comments? Well, I can't get too complicated. My system's going to crash. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just stay here then. No, it can't. It will not be Prince Harry. It doesn't matter if he's the king or not. No king of England can be the Antichrist. Uh, Sherry, bless you. First time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Sunday Law is the mark of the beast. No, it's not. Um, yeah, so if you guys are, are new here, uh, please watch the videos from Armageddon News or in Wings of the Eagle. You will get educated quickly. Scripturally. And that's the point, okay? Not anything weird. Um, we're not guessing here. This is not, we're not going opinions. We're not doing private prophecies. We're not doing any of that stuff. Scripture only, all right? All right, let's see. By the way, this is Wings of the Eagle Radio as well. Uh, get our free app at End Time Church. Just go to the uh, Apple App Store or the Google Play Store for your Android device on your phone or tablet. Free app called End Time Church. This way we can relate to each other and get to know each other and um, really get to the be about the business of the gospel and about being with each other that's what the scripture commands and we do have a book by the way um there are free books joel richardson now has made all his books free um also a free book from john preacher who is head of armageddon news he wrote one called the islamic antichrist as well it's free on the facebook page um and we have one called Flee to the Mountains. If, again, looking forward, not that's happening right now, but that's coming up. What is the church's responsibility to Israel? Because we're not just going to sit at home and watch this stuff happen. God expects things of his church to witness in the midst of Israel's uh, being attacked. And we have to provide the places where they will flee. When Jesus says flee to the mountains, he's not talking to the air. Uh, he's talking to you. And we have to uh, be about that work. And there's no reason why it can't begin now, even if... You don't believe that we're going to be around. Even if you think it's a uh, rapture can happen at any moment and Jesus can come for you, well, someone has to build something f at some point, okay? So let's be about that. Let's, let's, there's a project called Jacob's Refuge um, that is going to um, be about that mission. All right, so again, go to the uh, fleetofthemountainsbook.com. There's a course on it as well. You can find it all at that uh, website. It's on Amazon and Kindle and all that stuff. Um... Okay. 
What do we got here? Yeah, I like these comments. They're good. Expl- here we go. Sherry. Um, uh, Thomas, first of all, very good. Is what I was trying to say. He says, forget the royalty of Great Britain. They're not going to give you the Antichrist. The Antichrist is the Assyrian, right? The Assyrian is a geographic locator. Uh, Sherry says, explain seven-year tribulation changed to five months in Revelation or even the elect will be fooled. You're conflating a couple different things here. Um, Number one, the seven years that we're looking for is not all the tribulation. Okay, The first half of it is called the beginning of the birth pains, where we have some wars, where we have pestilence and earthquakes and and major shakeups in the world. That's where this beast system is uh, as it forms, it formed and made the covenant with Israel. They make a seven-year deal with Israel. Say, we will not invade you. Israel says, thank you. We're going to build our temple. That's when the seven years begin. The first half of that is not called the Great Tribulation. Only the second half is called the Great Tribulation. It's also called Jacob's Trouble because that's when Israel is invaded by this caliphate. This mega country is, through the Antichrist, the leader is going to invade Israel and win. God will not prevent it. God will provide these places to flee, and then the remnant will return and call for Jesus, and that's the end. Um, Okay, so again, the Great Tribulation is only three and a half years, even though we're expecting seven to come, and that's true. So that's number one. What you're talking about, about five months in Revelation, there's one mention of that period. Revelation chapter 9, at the fifth trumpet, there's a demonic abyss. Okay, there's the abyss opened up. There's an angel that falls from heaven, given the key, and these demons come out, and they are they look like locusts, and they have scorpion tails, and they torment men. It says those without the seal of God only for five months. So that's the period. That five months only applies to the fifth trumpet. Nothing else. It has nothing to do with shortening of the Great Tribulation or anything like that. That's not true. Um, even the elect will be fooled. Well, doesn't really say that. Um, even there would be no flesh saved if that time was not cut short. That means you'd all be dead. Satan desires that every Christian and every Jew be killed who won't convert to Islam or to his religion. Okay, that's the purpose of the Antichrist. That's the purpose of this false Jesus that comes and forces you to worship under pain of death. So if Jesus didn't return they would kill all the Christians and all the Jews. That's what he means. Okay, does that help? Oh, boy. Um, I did see the question, so there you go. Uh, There will be many antichrists, yes, true. But even like the Epistle of John states, there are many antichrists, but the Antichrist, capital letters, is coming. Um... False prophet will demand you worship the image Antichrist or you'll be executed. That's correct. And by the way, don't worry about the mark of the beast or any of that because it can't happen yet. The false prophet is the one who brings that mark of the beast. So don't tell me it's Sunday worship or any of this other stuff. It doesn't exist yet. And it can't be enforced. Um... I just, I wanted to answer, oh, something about the Noah Tide laws, good gravy, Noah Hide laws. Please, Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown had an excellent um, show on that exact subject about a week ago. Go look up Dr. Michael Brown, Noah Hide laws. It's a scam, all right? It's, it's a lie. It, it's a, a conspiracy theory that's stupid, okay? The Jews are not going to be beheading Christians, period. Um... There's not enough of them. Even if anyone thought that, which nobody does. I've been to Israel. There's no problem there. Um, okay. Is the Sea American Patriots for God and Country? Whoever that is, I assume it's a brother. Is the seal of God simply not having the mark of the beast? Not exactly. Um... So there's 144,000 Jews, okay, of Israel specifically. That's why they're all mentioned by tribe, uh, sealed by God. So they are immune. They can't take uh, the mark of the beast. They don't want to. This is they follow the lamb wherever he goes. The lamb of God is Jesus. So they can't be deceived that way. Um, they're not going to worship the Antichrist. Um, and again, that the, the seal of God protects you from that fifth trumpet situation. 
But nothing really more than that is said. Um, don't worry about the rabbis, okay? Seriously, guys, come on. Yeah, and the Isli- the, who's beheading Christians and Jews? The Muslims. Because it's in the book. It's in their foundational to their faith is God has no son. God is not a father. And beheading is the way you take care of those who won't submit to Islam. It's baked in. There's nothing in uh, Judaism that would ever, ever compare to that. Um, Okay, anything else? Revelation 12, um, right? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That hasn't happened yet, Revelation 12, 7. That's why he gets ticked off, because the short time is only three and a half years that he has. That's why he invades Jerusalem when he... Uh, when the Satan is cast from earth, uh, to earth. Um, the Antichrist will be a Sufi-Sunni mixture. Possibly. Possibly. Um, okay. I think that's all right. Oh, David Davidson. Oh, see now, you're falsely accusing a brother. This guy, meaning me, is a lying false prophet Judaizer. The Antichrist will be a Jew. No, he will not. There is zero scripture that says that, so I rebuke you in Jesus' name. All right. Um, Yeah. Not all the tribes are Jews. Get out of here, David. Get lost, okay? Uh, We're trying to be serious here, not throw around dumb accusations. All right. I'm going to do one more scan for questions, and then we're going to end the show. Hopefully we've um, settled the, the, if you have an anxiety, uh, okay, or maybe an unreasonable, a false hope. A false hope is Jesus can come back for me today. No, he can't. You can die today. Yes. He can take you to heaven today. Yes. When you die, you go straight to the throne. Yes. If you're a martyr, you also go straight. Okay, so prepare for all eventualities because Jesus the, himself returning to the earth is not going to happen for at least seven more years, probably a lot more than that. Not a lot more, maybe. At least 10, okay? Look at think of it that way. And Antichrist even can't show up tomorrow. Um here's Pastor Randy. Many Antichrists are sent to deceive and distract from the true Antichrist. That's possible. So we're um we're gonna see, I think, a series of leaders or attempted leaders of this caliphate. They're all gonna try to say we're the right one. This is I'm the right leader. No, I'm the right leader. No, I'm to me, that would fulfill that um, one of those conditions uh, to say there are many antichrists. So watch out. Iran is going to do that. Iran is going to come out and invade their neighbors and say, maybe we have the leader. We are the true leader of Islam. Here is our leader, the Mahdi. And then he'll be killed. And, and it'll be clear that he wasn't the one. And then Turkey will say, no, we have the real. Right. It'll be a whole little not so fun thing. Um, okay. Uh, if you don't, if you've asked something that I haven't addressed, if you really want to uh, address it, you can always send me a message privately, uh, Christopher at wingsoftheeagle dot com. Um, also on Twitter at manti four m a n t e i four m a n t e i four on Twitter. Um, okay, here's some. See, we're getting some good action here now. I like this. Uh, what means the Assyrian? It means from the nations of the Assyrian Empire in the ancient world in the Bible. Uh, Nineveh was the capital that is Mosul in Iraq today. So look for northern Iraq, northern Syria, or southern Turkey to be the home of the Antichrist. Um, let's see. Could the De- uh, Shiami, forgive me if I mispronounced you, could the deal of the century be connected to 1 Thessalonians 5.3? You're talking about Donald Trump and the quote-unquote deal of the century, I assume, because uh, every deal he makes is the deal of the century, right? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.3, no. See, the, the deal, no matter what American um, prescribes for a peace deal or whatever, it's not really relevant because the, to have a deal, you have to have the parties of the deal. Included, okay? Israel is one party. The surrounding nations are the other party. That's why it has to, they have to be represented by one person, one king over all of them. 
That's called the Antichrist. When the ten get together and unite as one, and they have this one pop up and say, okay, I'll, I'll do this thing, I'll make peace with Israel. That's the one. Before that, not, none of it matters. Donald Trump can do whatever he wants. It's irrelevant to me. I, don't, I just don't see it mattering at all. Um, and you said 1 Thessalonians 5.3. I'm just going to make sure we quote that right and get the right version. Uh, if when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains on a pregnant woman. No, this Donald Trump deal is not that. Um, however, when the real deal happens, that is exactly what it's talking about. Because the phrase labor pains or woman in labor or sorrows of labor is a, is a keystone, is a touchstone for us to connect all those verses of the Bible that talk about woman in labor. That's the first three and a half years of the final seven. That's what Jesus said. So when we know there's peace and safety, yes, Israel is at peace. They've made the deal for three and a half years. That's the labor pain period. And then sudden destruction comes upon them. The middle of the week, Antichrist invades and the abomination of desolation occurs. That ain't happening with Donald Trump's plan. Because America is not one of the parties. Party A is Israel. Party B is the nations that surround Israel. That's all that matters. I don't care about Russia, China, Europe, America, anywhere except them. They have to sign it. Once they sign it, then we're talking Turkey. Okay, that's funny. I didn't even mean to say that. Ah, you get lost yourself. This is, this is very good. Um, okay, anything else? Does the rapture, Jermaine says, does the rapture happen after the sixth seal? Um, short, short answer on that is, I believe the seals are the entire end times. It's not just seven things that happen before the seven trumpets. I think that's everything. The seals are the whole deal. Um, even before the tribulation begins, before the Antichrist shows up are the seals. Uh, the fourth seal is the agreement with Israel. The fifth seal is the abomination of desolation. The sixth seal is actually the return of Jesus itself. And the seventh seal is when everything's over, after he establishes the kingdom. So, um, In that respect, the rapture is at the sixth seal. So that teaching really is not incorrect, uh, but it's just I think a lot of folks see that as the beginning of the seven-year period, not at the end of it. I'm seeing the seals, I think, of the whole thing. Um, anything else? Um, uh, there is another deal of the century that the Pope wants to sign with the religious leaders next May. Irrelevant. Dr. Fu, and that's the name he put in there. Uh, the, the Pope is irrelevant in this. There's no meaning, no purpose. Again, who are the parties? Israel and the surrounding nations. That's it. It doesn't matter what the Catholic Church does. Or says it does not matter. Um, Jesus. Okay, okay. Pray for the Antichrist to come. I don't know about that. Uh, John says Jesus' ministry was three and a half years. That's maybe. Um, and so three and a half years into the seven, oh, Jesus' ministry was seen three and a half years into the 70th week. That's not true. That's totally impossible because Daniel says that the Messiah is crucified at the end of the 69th week. So the 70th week is not the ministry of Jesus in any way, not the first half or any part. The 70th is future. Uh, what do you think about Erdogan? Erdogan is very likely the great horn of the goat that we read in Daniel chapter 8. This is the when they retaliate against Iran and unite the Middle East under Turkish rule. Erdogan will be the one who does that. However, he is killed or taken out of power, so he is not the Antichrist. That's my opinion. Um, anything else? Uh, here we now. I'm not reading anything that says the Jews or the Antichrist or the cause of any trouble. Um, yes, yes. Praise Yeshua, Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor. Amen. Um. Well, we should watch out for Turkey. Uh, now, Nick says Walid Shabbat says that. Well, he, I wouldn't listen to anything Walid says right now. He's a troubled man. Um, 
Joel Richardson has been pointing out Turkey for just as long as Walid, and he is a uh, real humble uh, brother in Christ, and so I, I recommend you stick closer to what Joel is doing. Um, when does the rapture happen? Doesn't matter. Be victorious for faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, until he returns. That's a good way to put it. But we do know when it is. Is that the, is that the end? Um... Anything else other than criticism? The Would the Antichrist maybe destroy Islam rather than be the head? Absolutely not. Not. No. No way. Because Satan, Satan set this up 1,400 years ago. It's the largest false religion in the history of mankind, and it just so happens it checks off every box that God says to look out for in the end times. So it's not going anywhere. Um, can I kick him out of the chat? This person making trouble? I guess I could. Um, I don't know. I don't want to be mean. Time out. Okay. Um, Antichrist never against Christians? I don't know what that means. Was Osama, meaning Osama bin Laden, an Assyrian? Nope. He was a Saudi Arabian. Um, unless you're talking about Barack Obama, not Osama. And definitely not. Obama was not an Assyrian either. Yes, John. It says he was crucified at the end of the 69th week. Daniel chapter 9. Um, any thoughts on the hidden temple? I don't know what that means. The hidden temple doesn't make sense to me. I mean, prophetically. Uh, I think I skipped something in here about the temple. Uh, anyway, I can't find it now. Okay. Uh, started the sacrifices last week. No, that what happened? There's a, a fringy group that uh, started sacrificing animals on the Mount of Olives or something. It means nothing. I mean, prophetically, it doesn't. There will be an actual temple rebuilt in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. I don't believe the Dome of the Rock will go anywhere. I think they're going to be neighbors. I think it'll be right next door. Happy, happy. Everyone's peaceful. Come to the temple. Ah. Uh... Okay, boy, we're really kind of skewing off a little bit here. Uh, I believe Scripture says he comes from the tribe of Dan. I've heard that theory. I don't, I don't accept it. It says, as in Revelation, when the 12 tribes are mentioned, Dan is replaced. Dan is replaced because of idolatry in the book of Judges. Um, so there's that. And then he's restored, by the way. So again, Antichrist is not a Jew. It's not in the Bible. Um, no, we should not be focusing on the Roman Empire, the Pope, or, or Greta, this poor, misguided girl who's whining about climate change. Um, forget the Pope, guys. Seriously. I'm not saying he's great or has doctrine right or that you should be a Catholic. No, but just he's a distraction. What do you think about Neom versus Mecca? I think Neom is one of the most incredible obvious signs that God will provide to the end time church. And I write about it in Fleet of the Mountains. I have a whole chapter on it. Please go read it. Um, I think it could be Mystery Babylon itself. And, by the way, headquarters uh, for the resistance. Um, Germany, the seat of Satan. Sorry, no. Do you believe that Mohammed bin Salman, who's the crown, crown prince of Saudi Arabia, do you believe he is likely or probable to be Antichrist? No. Or anyone else? No, I don't know who. I, again, like I said earlier, maybe you missed it. No one in power today can be the Antichrist. Um, Daniel, the prophet, is pretty, pretty clear and explicit that he comes out of nowhere. That he does not have a so he comes strong among a small people. 
and that he gets it's a power grab right at the at the end it's not something that he's growing into now um or that you can say oh this leader is him or this leader is him i don't think any of them are okay okay well blessings to you thank you so much um all right i'm done even though i like this q a session i do enjoy that um we are going to shut it down, I believe. For the, by the way, this is Wings Legal Radio, not not live chat on Facebook or YouTube, but uh, that's what we've got. Um, it hasn't been an hour yet. I'll stick around a couple more minutes. Uh, let's take a look at Facebook and see what the folks are saying there. Uh, yes, Rand, Randy's on a roll on my on my personal feed. So praise God for you. Pastor Randy, I all pr- I pray that you all get a pastor like Randy Scott. By the way, uh, he's teachable. He's he's got a heart of gold. He's all about saving the lost. He's tender hearted. He always hug you when you come into church, um, and he's uncompromising in sticking to the Word of God. That's a good combination. Um, okay. Hey, here's some comments. Hey, uh, Ann, I'm sorry. Okay, I've got Facebook up now. We'll t- I'll take care of this here. Oops. Okay, here we go. I don't want extra sound. Okay, here we go. Uh, good day. Good day to you. Um... Rapture is not a salvation issue. Um, that's true. However, when the end times events begin and the tribulation arrives and there has no been, been no rapture yet, a lot of the church will fall away who believe it because they're not prepared. Uh, hey, Renea. Blessings. Uh, Anne says, Does Daniel not say after the 69th week, which would make it the 70th week, or am I missing something? Uh, you're missing something. <laughs> that's just um depending on the look, look at different translations in your bible it means at the end of the 69th week the 70th has nothing to do with jesus at all to be honest with you um he only comes at the end of it and there's seven years to go see this is the problem um those who think that there's only three and a half years left think that antichrist can show up tomorrow that's the point of the show no he can't there's many things laid out before he can arise. There's many things that, where's the temple? It says he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Jesus said he will come into Jerusalem and sit. The abomination of desolation is in the temple. When you see that with your fleshly eyeballs, then you know that you have to flee to the mountains. Great tribulation has begun. Well, how can we see that if there's no temple? The first half of the 70th week builds the temple. So no, the the ministry of Jesus is not the seventieth week in any way. I'm sorry, it's just it, it's. Pr- I don't want to overstate it, but I've known folks who have uh, believed that and then really slid down the wrong doctrine road and really have gotten off, and now they're preterists. You know what a preterist is? That's the uh, prophecy is all fulfilled already in the past. There is nothing to come, and if you really go all the way in that thinking, you're saying Jesus won't even return. So that's dangerous. So in that respect. I really caution anyone against thinking that Jesus fulfilled the first half of the 70th week. It's a dangerous, slippery slope. Um, Rahans, I think I addressed this earlier. This is the, what is the role of Turkey or Erdogan? Turkey, the role of Turkey is huge. It's massive. Um, um, it's the main driver of the final kingdom, of the beast kingdom. It unites, basically, the world, the Muslim world in the Middle East. They're the ones who drive this train, um, and probably uh, they are the, uh, when the, the, we're told there's a kingdom that existed, now is going to come back. It's an Islamic kingdom, so technically it could be from any part uh, of the Muslim world, but the fact that Turkey and the land of Turkey that we call Turkey today, Yavan, Magog, King of the North, or all these places, it's very likely that the Antichrist will be from Turkey itself, um, but Erdogan is not him because if he is who he appears to be, that he'll be taken out of the way. And again, I don't see anywhere where Antichrist will have power before he rises up at the end. So you can't look at any modern leader and say, this is him. 
Hello from the Philippines. Well, praise God for you. Thank you, Denise. Um, okay, anything else? All right, and again, if I, f- forgive me if I've missed you, if I've skipped over you, it's not intentional. Um, j- but a lot of you guys are held up on this 70 weeks of Daniel. We really need to study this, I guess. Why does Daniel 11 prophesy a Messiah or anointed one should be cut off? You mean Daniel 9? Correct? Uh, Joshua? Um, for, yes, I'm saying forget about the Pope because it's not relevant in, prophetically. I don't... Where? Show me scripture. Um, Lance, um, no, Ronald, here it is. Ronald says, Ronald McDonald. I mean, I guess that's really your name, but the temple location is in the old city of David, not the Temple Mount. That is incorrect. And I'm sure of that because I was in Israel and we asked that exact question to the Jewish tour guide who was talking to us about the Temple Mount. And he got visibly angry at that insinuation. insinuation. Um, some people are getting very wealthy off of that information. And so he just was very dismissive. He says, look... Um, there's a reason why nobody cares about that place. The Palestinians aren't uh, rioting over the city of David. Satan doesn't build a mosque on the city of David. The holy hill is Mount Moriah. That's the Temple Mount. Um, Christians should believe Jesus fulfilled the law and not do away with it. Okay, well, we're not going to get into all that. Um, thank, thank you, Leroy. Brother, we are in the time of the Gentiles when Jesus was crucified. This has nothing to do with the weeks of Daniel, end of the 69th week, and the 70th starts when the AC is announced. Yeah, that's basically right. Answer what the tribulation is shortened to, then you ignore that scripture. No, I'm not ignoring it, John. Shortened just means to end. It says, if those days were not shortened, mean if those days were not cut short, means ended. That three and a half years is written in stone. It must be that long. Not just, I mean, in many scriptures, in Daniel and Revelation, Jesus alludes to the full time period, endure to the end. There is no shortening of it. It just means to stop it. If those days weren't cut off, if those, like him, he was cut off at the end of the 69th week, that means he died. That means the days themselves will end. If he doesn't come to stop them, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be stopped. Okay? Because someone has to survive. There have to be Jews to call for Jesus, and there has to be a church here. That's why those who are alive and remain, that means the very few who are left after the martyrdom that's going to happen, those are the ones who are raptured. Changed uh, into the new bodies, resurrected. <sighs> um, right. Uh, Muslims have buried dead soldiers in front of the eastern gate to prevent Jesus from entering the temple when he returns. That is correct. I've I've been there. I've seen it. I've seen the gravestones. They think that no priest of Israel will dare enter through the dead bodies uh, into that eastern gate. So they're literally trying to stop the return of the Messiah by burying people there. That is true. Uh, Mary, again, Marina... Nor, sorry, I'm curious as someone who isn't as studious as you should be, why Islam has to be the main religion of the Antichrist since the devil so heavily into the occult. I don't, I mean, the devil's not into anything other than stopping Jesus and killing the Jews. Uh, however, that's going to happen, that's what he's going to do. So he created Islam specifically for that purpose. The occult, I mean, it's kind of a sidebar. It, we're talking about billions, billions of followers in Islam. Billions. A cult and, and Satanism has almost nothing, has almost no nobody following it. So if he did both, he's got one real success story and one real failure. 
Okay. Uh, anything else? Um, okay. I'm satisfied now. It's been, it's been long enough. I really appreciate you guys. Um, hey, Anne. Okay. A teaching would help uh, as far as the 69th versus 70th week and all that? Maybe. I mean, we've done that. Um, but certainly can't hurt to do it again, right? Okay. Uh, praise God, this has been Wings of the Eagle Radio. If we've helped you, if this has ministered to you, and I know we're on different channels here, but Wings of the Eagle is the ministry that God has called us into to do this program and to do these outreaches and to do this reaching out to the Muslims with the gospel and to uh, reach out to Israel to save them when the time comes um, and to connect the church. That's what we're doing right now. We're connecting the church throughout the world, literally on the air right this second. So if this has blessed you, if you've learned anything, if you think the Holy Spirit is in this at all, we need your help. We don't have support of corporations or any donors, you know, that are propping this thing up. Um, this is simply acting on faith and going literally day to day um, from a from a humble uh, person uh, here on the East Coast of America to wherever you are. Um, we love you. Uh, Jesus is real. He's alive. He's coming again. If we ministered to you, please return the favor at wingsoftheeagle.com slash donate and give what you can, please. Um, it's really important because without it, we can't do this. This costs money, believe it or not. So uh, help us to continue doing it. Please, monthly support at, of any amount, anything literally, would be very, very helpful. So bless you in that. Uh, I pray the Lord continues to work with you and through you and that you'd be an effective witness for Jesus Christ and present the gospel uh, unashamedly. And even if you think, well, you're not smart enough, guess what? None of us are smart enough. None of us are prepared. Let the Holy Spirit do his thing and uh, glorify the name of Jesus and bring people to the Father. And then these events, they're going to happen, and we can be useful when they happen too. And not be afraid. Never, never, never be afraid. Never hate. Uh, abide in the love of God. And by our love for each other, we will be known to the world. So continue to love each other. I'll see you next time. This is Pastor Christopher Manti with, uh, through many uh, avenues today, but this is Wings of the Eagle Radio. God bless you. And until next time, again, pray always. Never forget. We'll see you next time. Until next time, pray always. Meet with others who know what's coming. Join the free network at wingsoftheeagle.com and spread the word. The destiny of the final generation of the saints of God draws near.